We're buying an RV for a dollar, and then we're going to pay a few hundred dollars to move it. <laughs> and then we're going to catch it on fire. But to understand why we're standing in the middle of a field surrounded by firefighters setting fire to this RV on purpose, we've got to go back a few years. In 2019, we did a video about our visit to an RV salvage yard. There we got to see where RVs go to die. Some landed there after an accident, some after a fire. We got to see and smell firsthand the impact of an RV fire. It was a sobering experience and we haven't been able to forget it. Then a year later in 2020, six families close to us lost their homes to fire. Two of those families lived in homes on wheels, RVs. This really had an impact on us and we just kept wondering what could we do to make a difference. So we decided to find an old RV and set it on fire so we could see what really happens and learn from the experience. Of course it had to be safe, so we asked the fire department for help and started planning our crazy experiment. Our first task was finding an RV that was still intact yet beyond restoration. It couldn't be trashed. It had to be an RV people could relate to. Okay, so today we're gonna go check out one of our potential subjects for the RV fire. We'll see if it's gonna work out for what we're planning here. It's an old 1973 Winnebago Indian motorhome, but it would need some RV love before going out in a blaze of glory. Just finished checking out the Winnebago. It's got a lot of personality. It's got all of its windows and doors. Kind of ironic that I actually need to do a little bit of work to it to make it viable to burn it to the ground. But now I've just got to figure out what it's going to take to get it drug out of his field to what we find for a burn location. We ran it by the fire department and they agreed this RV would be perfect. We decided to call it Harvey. So one of the most challenging things in this whole project has been finding a suitable location to burn an RV because it's not like you can just throw it in the backyard and set fire to it. I mean, especially when we've got the fire departments, we want to be really careful, especially we don't want to burn any of the trees anywhere near. So we need a big wide space because this is going to be a big fire to figure out what's left of it and find another way to transport what's left to a salvage yard. So it's multiple stages. This has definitely not been easy, but I think Today we're headed to what we think is going to be a good location for that. It's beautiful, look at that. I, I can't even believe it. We, we found a great place. It's a beautiful campground up in the mountains called Kepler Corner, probably two acres of wide open space. How cool that a campground was so excited about helping with fire safety education in RVs, able to share their beautiful location for us to do this burn. Just everything's just coming together so well, super exciting. Before Harvey could be towed, we had to take care of a little problem. I found a few things that were potential hazard for fire in an RV. Let me show you and explain. So with all RVs, you wanna make sure you regularly check your outside bays, whether it's your water heater, an electrical bay, the backside of an RV refrigerator, because those have small openings that little bugs, wasps, uh, sometimes small birds and even bats have been known to get inside those spaces and create nests. This is an example right here in this water heater area this was all full of a big wasp nest and you know if this was left unchecked it could have caused this is a live hot fire right here when you're using that hot water heater that could easily start a fire in this area and here's the back of the refrigerator you can see all these coils here and a propane fridge would also have a live flame in here 
you can see how you could have a lot of nesting material in here. There's even this, look at all this dusty. This would be a fire hazard as well. So definitely regularly check the back sides of these compartments to make sure there's no nests getting built and reduce your fire hazard. It was time for Harvey's final road trip. It's not any good anymore as far as doing anything with it. I mean, it's just it's been totally jumped. What's the condition like under underneath? Rusty? Toast, huh? Well, I'm actually glad to hear that. It really is beyond repair, unfortunately. Do you have any final parting words for Harvey the Arby? No, I don't. I've, I've got lots of good memories. We had a lot of fun. It's a great life, the RV life, isn't it? Yep. So who gets to clean the mess up? We do. <laughs> you want to come help? <laughs> In its heyday, this motorhome was all class, a star at Winnebago rallies and loved by families young and old. And while there's some beautiful restorations around, sadly, Harvey is way beyond that. This looks so great on the outside and, you know, please, no one take offense that this looks so good because it's really not damaged beyond what we think is repairable because you open this door and you can see the sky. I mean, the roof is completely caved in here. If you watch your head, you can see it's pretty trashed in here. The ceiling's completely caved in. Lots of water damage. Now, it may seem crazy, but even though the plan was to burn this RV, we had to make it look like someone lived in it. So we got to work on a mini makeover for Harvey the RV. You know, when you're regular RV, you're gonna have clothes inside your cabinets. And those clothes and any other items you have in your RV are actually additional combustible items. So if you overload your RV, there's even more fuel for a fire. So be mindful of what you carry along with if for no other reason than because RVs have limited weight capacities. So we'll need to take the, the shock absorbers off because when you're burning it, those can be a hazard for the fire firefighters. And we'll have to figure out the gasoline. Propane tanks are already removed. So we do have, definitely have a few things we're gonna have to prepare for safety for the firefighters. We were ready for the RV burn, or so we thought. I don't know for sure yet, we're about to speak to the fire chief, but it looks like the burn may be cancelled because there is an actual real legit fire happening in the surrounding area and obviously that's what the fire crew needs to prioritize is a real fire not a demonstration fire so yeah okay. finally after months of planning over zoom calls we got to meet chuck in person but he had bad news. Unfortunately, because of the weather conditions today, we're not safely able to do the burn demonstration. So we'll have to postpone it until another day. Chuck offered to share some advice on keeping us safe with fires in our homes and in our RVs. I'm Chuck Altvater. I'm the Professional Development Unit Chief at the Colorado Division of Fire Prevention and Control. And my role is to act as the training officer for all certified fire inspectors in the state of Colorado. And I also manage and coordinate the Fire Safe Colorado, which is our community risk reduction outreach program. 
Well, I, I so appreciate you coming out to help support this project. Yeah, of course. So many people live in their RVs nowadays. Mm -hmm. To everyone else who owns an RV, they spend two to four weeks of their life in an RV every year. We do see a lot of situations of fires in RVs. A lot of them are caused by engine fires or parts overheating or even chains dragging while people are, are driving on the road. We see a lot of kitchen fires. So people cooking, grease fires, loose hanging materials. We, we do see a lot of fridge fires. Not as much as we used to because more and more people are using domestic or 12 volt refrigerators and fewer are using propane refrigerators but they are still a hazard and there's, there's still millions of propane refrigerators out there. There are also fire hazards that are common in every type of home from overloaded extension cords, uh, extension cords running under carpets where the heat from the electricity can't escape the, the electrical cord. We also see heating devices that are either misused, not maintained well, or just simply malfunction like diesel heaters, wood stoves, and even the portable propane space heaters. We want them to be safe when they're cooking, when they're living, and just being safe with fire because they really are more vulnerable to it in an RV than they are in a traditional home. It was time for Chuck to take a tour of Harvey the RV. It's definitely seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> Another difference between homes on foundations and RVs is American homes are sheathed inside with gypsum board, with drywall. And it's important to remember that almost 30% of the weight of gypsum is water, chemically trapped within the rock. And when gypsum is heated, it releases that water as water vapor into the atmosphere, and that helps control or stifle the fire growth. Mm -hmm. You don't have that in an RV. A lot of synthetic uh, surfaces that, right. once they start off-gassing, are going to ignite very quickly. Plastics and poly polyesters are like solid... Solidified fluid. gasoline. Solidified gasoline. <laughs> With our RV fire plans on hold, waiting to see if the weather conditions would improve, we decided to just kick back and enjoy some RV life. Do it. Oh! Well, here we are, the morning of our supposed burn. Um, we've been checking the weather reports, I'm not optimistic, we'll say that. I, I'd give it less than 1% chance this thing's gonna come off today. There's just, there's a lot of risks. When we had multiple fire departments involved before, and then yesterday they were all backing out. So, I don't know. It's, it's not totally off the table, but I'm starting to make other plans to try and figure out what I'm gonna do with this RV now that we bought it to burn it. And if we can't burn it, now I gotta figure out something else to do with it. So months of planning this event and all these people involved, people coming in from out of state to do this burn and to think it's all now falling apart on the day of, it's pretty disappointing. We're waiting to hear final confirmation from the fire marshal this morning to know whether it's a go or not. This is crazy because this morning, I thought we had less than 1% chance of this thing coming off. Is it on? Yes. As of now. There's no red flag warnings. Winds are predicted to be calm. I talked to the local fire chief and he saw no reason not to do it. We're gonna step back and let the locals take over. Paul, did you think it was gonna happen today? No, I didn't, but I'm happy. I'm happy it's going on. We All right, really I'm gonna keep moving forward. here. I'll be back. Well, We're going to help out with the fire extinguishing today with a Super Soaker XP100. <laughs> Here's a nice Empire Strikes Back winter sweater. For those folks that were worried about these clothes that we're putting in here, these are clothes that were not accepted by the local thrift shop. These are the unwanteds of the unwanteds. <laughs> We got these from the dollar store. Nice. I can't believe it's actually happening. I'm really nervous, actually. I've had moments of like, I don't know if I want to go through with this. Is it? It's gonna happen. This extinguisher was in the RV. It's uh, made in 1973. So you saw 
this when we first had it delivered. We've gone through, cleaned it up, prepared it before the burn so it is more, looks more homey and livable. The original owners took the stove out so we've got a little camp stove here. But yep, lots of stuff that people would have. A couple of things. This is not a good idea to keep your paper towels anywhere near your cooking area, nor paper plates, anything flammable. Got the bed set up here, the bedding, and if you've got your closet full of clothes, this is all combustible. Hemp, cotton, or natural fiber would be less flammable than polyester. These are all combustible items. We put out a couple extra things, some snack chips and some citronella candles and nail polish, all kinds of other flammable things that people don't necessarily think about being flammable. So we have three cameras set up to capture this burn from the inside. Uh, the fire guys have built these boxes. We don't know if they're going to survive. We have one here on the dining table, one over here on the dash, and one back here in the upper area of the bedroom. I have a bag here with some uh, important documents, which is really just paper and a copy of our book to see how this survives. This is one of these fireproof bags. And we're gonna put it to the test. This is sacrificial and we have put a smoke detector in here that's it getting a bit hot and sweaty in here it's going to get a lot hotter in a minute so let's go get ready to set this rv on fire ready to burn Fire. <laughs> Honestly, putting some bacon in a, in a cast iron frying pan or any frying pan, putting it on there and letting it get too hot, put some bacon on the cook, and the kids called you outside, and you went to you know your RVs and flames. The grease gets so hot, it, it actually ignites. 650 degrees. Yeah. Oil just bursts in flames. If it gets hot enough, it'll actually create its own cycle. So the two crews, they're getting suited up, they're charging their lines with the two trucks. So what we're looking for in this shot with this RV is we want to be able to see just how easily a fire, we're going to simulate a uh, cooking fire on the stove top and we'll see just how long that fire takes from the stove to igniting this entire RV. From what we understand, it's only a matter of seconds from when a fire starts to get out of that RV safely. We're gonna have multiple cameras rolling inside, multiple cameras rolling outside, so we can capture this and educate people as much as possible. Hose is ready, lines charged. We got the drones up in the air, trucks all around, cameras set up inside and outside the RV. coming out of the windows right now. This is happening fast. You just got a matter of seconds to get out. Oh, this is so nerve wracking. It 
from our discussions with fire professionals earlier, average response time for a fire truck is eight minutes. That's from when they get notified. This is 10 minutes now. The flames are 15 feet above the RV. So if they were called immediately, they would super unlikely they would be here even by this point. And by this point, this RV is gone. It's why it's up to us to prevent a fire in the first place by not keeping hazards in, in your RV and by having your own supplemental fire extinguisher, fire cans, you know, smoke detectors and get the heck out of there as fast as you can because it's not going to get safe. Whoa, that's hot. Need to step back. And our learnings talking to these fire professionals this week is the smoke inhalation is the first thing that kills you and of course it goes up high first which is why you put a smoke detector up high in your home or in your RV. What happened? My phone just overheated. He said 25 minutes is a normal response. Oh! What was that? Wait. Woo! Get back, Tim. And again, extinguish. Excellent job, guys. Good job. Wow, look at this. Wow. What was that? That's, that's the fuel tank filler. We should have taken the gas off. That's what popped at the end. Of the uh, 15 minutes that was burning, it was untenable to human life for 14 of those. All three inside cameras melted, but as you saw, two of the SD cards survived. Oh my god! How about that? So this fireproof bag, this was a nearly 2,000 degree temperature fire. We had this underneath the bed, and the bag did still get damaged, but not so much that it didn't mostly save our documents. That's impressive. That was a massive fire and this survived. That's amazing. Anybody have some water? So as sad as it was, we burned this one old RV as an important experiment to help save many, perhaps thousands, and maybe even your RV. So if this video was helpful to you, please share it with your friends. You could save a life. Now, who gets to do the cleanup? Yay! Yay, you! <laughs> I'm gonna take these guys to the airport, so sorry. But yeah. we've got awesome sorry. help, Tim and Emily, who are doing a year to volunteer, and they are here doing an amazing job. They helped us set up with this burn, and they're gonna help clean up the mess. So, thanks, guys. Time to get to it.
Now we realize this was pretty intense. Uh, there's a lot to take in. So we've summarized all of the key tips and learnings and things that you can do and put into practice in your own RV life or even in your home life to stay safe. And you can also find all that over at our blog at rvlove.com. And we also want to have a huge thank you to everyone who helped us pull this off. Paul and Emily from Kevlar Corner Campground for letting us do the burn here safely to Paonio's Fire Department. Thanks to Chuck and to Kyle and the team at the Colorado Division of Fire Prevention and Control. Jason and Megan who helped us film this to Emily and Tim who are helping us clean up the mess. Thanks to RV Life for supporting this project. And thanks to you for watching. We really learned so much from working with these fire professionals throughout this project and we couldn't fit it all into this one video. So hit subscribe, click the bell for notifications so you don't miss them. You can also visit our website rvlove.com to download our RV fire safety checklist for free.